We're going to get uh, fired right up with some news you can use. Today, we're going to talk a little bit about the markets, uh, the market corrections, and specifically where uh, some of the predictions are uh, from the markets that are overpriced. An article came out in Fortune magazine a couple days ago uh, that was interviewing the chief economist with Moody's. Moody's is one of the large uh, economic projection firms that looks at a lot of not just housing, but other pieces of the economy. Uh, they're considered pretty smart analytical company. Um, and they've done some research and they have shown that uh, based on this article, there are 392 MSAs in the United States for the housing business. So an MSA is a met metropolitan statistical area. So let's, let's think of it as Los Angeles. Uh, Los Angeles is a, a city, but around it, there's all these other small mid-sized cities that collectively would be considered the MSA of Los Angeles, the Metropolitan Statistical Area. So same thing with San Diego. There's a lot of little towns around it. That whole area, including the city of San Diego, would be considered the San Diego MSA. There are 392 distinct MSAs in the country. Uh, and their analysis, based on a deep dive, is that 96% of those 392 markets are overvalued. That's their quote, overvalued. Uh, 149 of which are overvalued by at least 25%. The, the worst, the, the, the most bad actor, the worst actor, however you want to say it, the one that is overvalued the most is the city of Boise, Idaho. They predict that the home prices there are 73% above the real value. So when Moody's did this kind of analysis in 2007-8, they found that most of these cities ended up dropping about what they thought the overvalue was. In fact, it actually, in some cases, it went down below the, the value. So if that's the case, uh, a home is currently selling for a million dollars in Boise is probably only worth $270,000. It's overvalued by 73% or something like that. Uh, I'm not sure exactly how they do that, but at a minimum, it's, you know, let's say it's 500 and you add three quarters to that, that would be like 800,000, 850,000 type thing. So it could go from 850 down to 500, uh, something like that. But at least 149, 150 of the MSAs nationwide are overvalued by at least a quarter. So expect prices to drop in those areas. They're, they've actually got a map. You can look up the article um, under fortune.com. There's an interactive map that actually shows all of the MSAs in the country and it rates them from, uh, there's actually, believe it or not, a few cities in the United States that are undervalued. Uh, and typically it's, it's the same place that we saw undervaluations in the last downturn. The Great Recession is primarily in the upper Midwest and then going up towards the Great Lakes, uh, and then in the Deep South, but not in Texas. So uh, there are a few places like that, but primarily, if you look at this map, I don't know if you guys can see this uh, very well, maybe you can. It's a color-coded map. Uh, the darker colors are the worst. The, the reds are the, the absolute worst. Um, purples, yellows, when you get down to the bright yellows, those are the undervalued markets, but you know, basically the majority of these things are overvalued. Now, let's talk specifically about what markets are overvalued. I'm going to give you this list here. Blair and I were talking about this today. And one thing, and we talked about this a little bit last year, but one of the things that is, that's stuck in our mind of these overvalued cities in every one of these things, either Zillow or Open Door or both of the e-buyers, i-buyers, whatever you want to say that, the, the, the large companies that went in and let their computers do their buying for them, bought in these cities. So here are the cities uh, that are the five most overpriced in terms of descending order. Um, so in other words, the worst down to the, the least over. So in fact, we'll do it the other way around. We'll do it uh, the overpriced, the least overpriced, but still overpriced up to the worst overpriced. The worst, of course, was Boise. Um, Number 10 on the list is New York, uh, New York City, New York, then Baltimore, Maryland, Honolulu, Hawaii, Atlanta, Georgia, Las Vegas, Nevada, Ogden, Utah, which is outside of Salt Lake, but it's a separate and distinct area, 
uh, Austin, Texas, and Boise City. Now, I would add, based on some personal observations, I'd add a few others in there. Phoenix is one. Uh, Sacramento area would be another, or the Bay Area of California, uh, the San Francisco, San Jose Bay Area. Uh, I would add those in as well. And then there are a few other markets around the country, but these are the ones that, from a statistical standpoint, have the largest possibility of price drops the quickest, if that makes any sense. In other words, if you buy something today at the peak of the market in Las Vegas, uh, dollars to donate is going to be worth a lot less a year, two years, three, five years from now. So those would be markets I would be very cautious and stay away from. If you can eliminate that in Facebook marketing, it's probably better. Of course, there's always markets to, to make money and if you buy right. Uh, but, you know, our, our philosophy is let's try and just uh, eliminate some of the rough edges up front so that you don't have to go through those problems. In other words, don't work in those cities uh, and some of the ones that are the 25% overpriced, just because you're more likely to have a better success rate in something that's either an undervalued market or, or a neutral market, which is really kind of where you want to be. So I would stay away from those. I would look at that interactive map on fortune.com and I would um, make myself aware of where you want to be careful. Um, and, and by the way, I'll tell a story here. I don't think we'll do it tomorrow's call, but probably Thursday. I'll talk about a sale uh, on a property that we just did, um, and it was in a relatively undervalued market. It was in the state of Wisconsin, and uh, we actually, we put it on the market Friday, I think at midnight, something like that, Friday, Saturday at midnight. Uh, by Sunday, we had three offers, one of which was over the ask, and that's the one we ended up taking. I'll tell you about that and show you about uh, how this thing, you know, works if you're if you're out there aggressively marketing, this was an ad I think we got through Facebook uh, and it was, uh, it looks to be a, a fairly profitable deal if it closes like it's supposed to. So I'll show you how that thing works and how we were able to do basically a, a spit shine, um, clean it up. I mean, to me, I was shocked when I looked at how horrible the paint job was inside the house, but there is still in some of these areas a big demand for this type of uh, home. So. We'll talk about that, I think, on Thursday. In the meantime,